All right, I'm back from New York, so let's dive right in. Today, I want to look at the beleaguered world of racing simulators, and more specifically, motorsport games, because this company, more than almost any other in video game history, has produced one of the most spectacular examples of reputation and business model implosion I have ever seen. From 97% shareholder losses to evaporating player metrics, business model failure, they're now on track for bankruptcy in 2022 without additional financing, to possible corporate lies, Motorsport Games is in a position of unique instability, resulting from their complete failure as a company. Before diving in, this story was brought to my attention by someone named Austin Ogonowski. He has a YouTube channel that heavily deals with racing simulator titles, and we corresponded via email about this very topic. His work was heavily influential in my own coverage, and he directly reached out to me about the situation in general, so I want to make a specific shout out to him for looking at a lot of what has happened and bringing my attention to it. His channel is linked down below in the description. So what is the topic? If you're a racing simulator fan, more specifically if you are a NASCAR and competitive racing simulator fan, you don't exactly have a lot of options. To explain this, we need to understand exclusivity, but in simplest terms possible, household names like FIFA or NBA, NFL, NHL, and NASCAR are almost always the subject of complicated licensing deals. The NFL, for example, has an exclusive contract with Electronic Arts until 2026, I think it is, as of, as of right now, to develop simulation football games based on the actual league. And this kind of licensing contract, whether exclusive or not, is replicated all over the gaming space. For NASCAR fans, IndyCar fans, BTCC fans, and more, there is basically just one official video game option called Motorsport Games. Motorsport Games, a publicly traded subsidiary of Motorsport Network, is a racing simulation development company, actually it started as a tech company, not really a development company, that also claims to create esports ecosystems and community-based services for their players. Notoriously responsible for the NASCAR Heat franchise, not exactly, but more on that in just a second, Motorsport Games also has a number of other titles under its belt, which round out a portfolio of racing simulators and boasts in particular that the NASCAR Heat intellectual property is, quote, one of the most played racing games in the world, end quote. That sounds like a lot, right? Sure, but let's take a look at the company's track record. Motorsport Games initially IPO'd, had its initial public offering to the stock market, in 2018, but things didn't exactly go smoothly. At first, it was great. Explosive growth, prices on the rise, and they even surpassed their IPO market price tag, $20 initially, hitting as high as $38 on that very first day. However, market excitement does not necessarily mean a successful business, and thus began the spectacular fall. Motorsport Games was a very big fan of acquisitions. One such acquisition was aimed at a company called 704 Games, the original creators of the NASCAR Heat franchise, it turns out, in 2018. 704 Games had been the exclusive partner of NASCAR since 2015, and if we break down the precise verbiage of Motorsports Games in their SEC filings, we find something rather interesting. Down on page 16, we can see the following, quote, We depend on a relatively small number of franchises for a significant portion of our revenues and profits, end quote. Now, by itself, that may seem completely inconsequential, but let's read on. We follow a franchise model and a significant portion of our revenues has historically been derived from products based on a relatively small number of popular franchises. These products are responsible for a disproportionately high percentage of our profits. For example, revenues associated with the NASCAR Heat franchise accounted for approximately 99% of our total net revenue for the years ended December 31st, 2019 and 2018, and the nine months ended September 30th, 2020. And we expect this franchise to continue to account for the majority of our revenue for the year ended December 31st, 2020." End quote. Now, again, for some people that may seem rather insignificant, but what if I told you that Motorsport Games was being sued by prior investors over their information disclosure policies during their acquisition of 704 Games? From what I can tell, this lawsuit is actually still ongoing, and a motion for dismissal has been recently denied by a judge allowing the case to proceed. Minority shareholders in 704 Games, before the acquisition, alleged that Motorsport Games lied to them with regards to profitability and near-term revenue. The lawsuit is very long and contains a lot of separate allegations with regards to the omission of material fact, negligent or even manipulative financial disclosures, and more, but the gist of it is that Motorsport Games allegedly lied to investors about the stability of 704 Games, even going so far as to say that the company was projected to have a $3 million EBITDA loss that year, which just means earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization, when in reality the company had net positive earnings in the millions. Let's recall something here. From Motorsport Games' own SEC filings, quote, 
Revenues associated with the NASCAR Heat franchise accounted for approximately 99% of our total net revenue for the years ended December 31st, 2019, and 2018, end quote. And NASCAR Heat is a product of 704 Games. Why would Motorsport Games buy a company while saying that it is a struggling entity directly before their own IPO? It turns out that the paperwork for this IPO was actually in the works already before the acquisition, and then openly acknowledged that this failing company's assets are responsible for 99% of their total net revenue. Something really doesn't add up here. Regardless, even if this lawsuit is still making its way through the court system, there are other issues for motorsport games, and chief among them is a completely eviscerated share price. After their IPO in early 2021 and an impressive jump to the high 30s, there has been a drop of over 97%, leading to a sub $1 price tag on a company that is barely just one year old on the public market. Every consecutive earnings report has painted an increasingly dire picture, and in their most recent filing, we get a fresh new look at the gutted financial reality and the impossible claims of motorsport games. In their most recent quarterly financials, we can see the following, quote, in 2021, we turned our 24-hour Le Mans virtual hit into an annual series together with great partners such as Rolex, Goodyear, Total Energies, Lego Techni, Algorand, and others that came along for the ride. And our 2021-2022 24-hour Le Mans virtual series has been enjoyed by more than 81 million fans across digital and linear channels. These are the type of official esports series we'll look to replicate with all of our partners, such as ETCC, IndyCar, NASCAR, and others. End quote. Now, notice they did not say BTCC, which they do have as an official partner on their website, and they previously had a game for BTCC coming out. But anyway, I'll, I'll circle back to that soon in the video. Anyway, yeah, moving on. This is a wild claim, and any company that can reach 81 million people across the globe should theoretically have innumerable options when it comes to monetization. Just for context, a single ad served to that number of people one single time is almost half a million dollars of ad revenue on YouTube, of which the platform then takes 45%. 81 million viewers for one esports race? Yeah, you can make tens of millions of dollars from that alone with ease. More context. Average NASCAR World Cup races on Fox don't even break 5 million viewers. And yet this failing company is capturing 81 million people around the world for a racing simulator esports event? Um, no. Actually, let's really showcase how absurd this claim appears to be. The 24-hour Le Mans Virtual Series takes place in a game called R Factor 2, another title that was acquired, not built, by, by Motorsport Games. And R Factor 2 has less than 1,000 maximum concurrent players on Steam. Still, not done. Motorsport Games is actually owned mostly by its parent company, Motorsport Network, and even Motorsport Network, the parent company of the actual tournament host, is only boasting an audience of 62 million monthly active users on their website. We are supposed to believe that over 30% more people watched an esports race, 81 million, in a game with less than 1,000 concurrent players on Steam, than the entire audience of that company's parent organization which covers innumerable NASCAR and motorsport industries, races, and events that are all lumped together into one main stat on their website. What? One last thing, as if we needed it. Motorsport Games created a YouTube channel specifically dedicated to the video game side of their business model. It's called Traxion GG. Traxion holds the actual videos, replays, clips, and visual content from their events. And the part one segment of their 24-hour Le Mans virtual hit supposedly having 81, 000, sorry, 81 million viewers around the world, it got 10,000 views. That event reached 81 million people, apparently. That's more than the World Cup for League of Legends, which hit record explosive highs during the pandemic. That's four times more than the World Cup for Fortnite in 2019, which saw roughly 20 million total viewers on Twitch. They want us to believe that 81 million people watched a race in a game with less than 1,000 concurrent PC players Okay, but we're still not done, because further down in their financial statement, we see the following. Quote, We expect to incur losses for the foreseeable future as we continue to incur expenses to develop new game franchises. Accordingly, we do not believe that our existing cash on hand will be sufficient to fund our operations for the next 12 months. At this time, we're not providing forward guidance. I would like to now turn the call back to Dimitri for closing remarks. End quote. This company, uh, that basically just means, like, 
we're done. We're finished. Like, just please give us more money. We're bankrupt. That's what that means. This company, after acquiring 704 games and allegedly lying to its investors about profitability, now claims to have captured five times more viewers than the Oscars during one single event, but somehow can't turn a profit and is going broke? They are on track for bankruptcy right now and aren't even bothering to produce forward guidance as the share price falls below $1 from a high of nearly 40 And as if all that isn't enough, they already lost the BTCC license. I'll keep this part short, but on their website, they list BTCC, British Touring Car Championship, that's what that stands for, as an official partner. And yeah, there was supposed to be a game coming this year for that property. <laughs> not anymore. Uh, I, I, I truly believe they do not have a, a desire to put out a good quality product. I don't ooh, even believe they know how to put out a good quality product. So... I pray Motorsports Games goes out of business sooner rather than later. I know that's horrible to say, but frankly, uh, they're not attempting to put together a good product. They lost the rights to the British Touring Car Series, by the way. Um, they, they put their tail between their legs on that, but it was supposed to come out this year in 2022, and it did not. Or it will not, I should say, because they lost the rights to it after this fiasco. IndyCar's trying to get out of the... Uh, trying to get the rights back for motorsports games after this thing came out nascar is trying to get the rights back um you know literally nobody is enjoying what they're doing that was a track announcer who also has his own youtube channel and uploads content about racing simulation games and sure enough nascar according to sports journalist mike straw is trying to get out of their partnership as well after the disastrous launch of nascar 21 ignition a game that now has eight yes eight like a single digit eight not 800 or 8,000 eight concurrent players on steam the company is falling apart and yet executives are receiving enormous pay increases as it dies the ceo dimitri cosco was paid over seven hundred thousand dollars when the company apparently can't even survive another year other executives were seeing their pay scale increase by as much as 200 percent year over year and the company is barely even a year old so keep that in mind and when you look at everything in context, it is genuinely hard to picture how any company could possibly be doing any worse than this. Many of us in the video game space look at publishers like EA as a sort of cancerous entity. We despise them for their financial choices and their monopoly on certain franchises. But the flip side here is that as much as we may hate them, NASCAR fans, they are stuck with motorsport games. Which is to say, stuck with something so dysfunctional and so mismanaged and just, it's... It's horrifying. It's basically dead in the water after one year on the public market, and they don't really have another option. Bottom line, I feel sorry for racing simulation fans who are subjected to the horrifying reality of motorsport games, and I hope that they can eventually be absorbed into something even remotely functional and get the games that they deserve. But yeah, that's it. If you want to support, please check out the links down below, primarily Patreon or Locals. I'm trying to distance myself from purely ad revenue. Also Odyssey, a YouTube platform alternative. There are some other YouTubers to check out merchandise, social media, et cetera, et cetera, but I'll cut it there and stop rambling. As always, thank you all for watching and have a nice night.